Hey, how's it going everyone? Today we've got a video where we're going to be testing this function right here in front of us. And this function's got a couple things going on that makes it a little bit tricky to test. The first thing is that it is asynchronous, so it returns us a promise. And the second thing that we need to deal with is that the reason it's asynchronous is because it uses Axios to make an AJAX request, uh, specifically an HTTP GET request. And that becomes difficult because in our test, we don't actually want to make the real HTTP request because A, it's really slow. Um, B, Axios might get angry that every time we run our test, we're hitting their server. And uh, C, there's certain requests you can't make um, all the time when you're testing, such as charging a credit card and things like that. So we need a way to solve both a synchronous function and a way to mock Axios so that we can almost have like a fake version of it that always returns us right away the thing that we're, in, we're expecting. So let's get in here and just start writing a test for it. So we're gonna create a new folder called underscore underscore test underscore underscore. And in here we'll create a file called unsplash.js which is the file that we are testing. So let's come in here and since we're testing the unsplash function, let's import it. So uh, import unsplash from unsplash. And actually, before I forget, if you'd like to follow along with this code and the video, if you follow the link below this video, it will take you to my blog where I'll have um, a link to the code in the state where we're at like right now when we began, right at the beginning, and also a finished version of the code if you want to just follow along and then have the, the final version as a reference. Okay, so let's keep going. We've imported our unsplash function. And next thing we need to do is write our test. So we'll say that it um, calls Axios and returns images. And we'll do our arrow function here. And here we can call our code. So const images equals unsplash, unsplash, and we'll search for some kittens. Cool. So let's just see what we're getting back. So let's just console.log and then we'll start fixing errors as they occur. So we'll come to the command line and we'll run yarn test. All right, and we get an error. Um, unsplash is not a function. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Oh, it's because it's in the folder above. And a bigger error. All right, so we got a network error. Um, and I think what's basically happening is we're trying to call Axios, but it can't, for some reason, work when we're running our tests. It just gives us an error. So right away, we need a way to basically use Axios um, in this test, but not the real Axios, a fake version of it. So let's come back to our code. And what we're gonna do is, in the SRC folder, which is sort of the main uh, root where all this code lives, um, well, that's anyways the case in a Create React app. And specifically, the library we're using is Jest to run our tests. So in this SRC folder, we will create a folder called underscore underscore mocks underscore underscore. So in here is where you can put mock modules that you want to use in your code during your tests. So, so specifically, the module we want to mock is Axios. So that's why we'll come here and, and create a fake Axios module. So let's just start by exporting an object like that. So how does this, how should this fake Axios look? Well, if we come to our code, we can see that Axios is a module, or we'll just say an object that has a get property on it, which is a function. So the real Axios makes the full-on HTTP request, but we need to make a fake version of this get function. So we come back here and we'll define a get property that can be a function. But instead of just having like a normal arrow function, we're actually going to use some Jest functionality to create a fake uh, function that sort of it's, it's referred to as a mock function or a spy function. 
And it's just a fake function, but it has some special special capabilities. Like um, you can ask it questions after it's been called. Like how many times were you called? What um, arguments were you called with? And you can um, pro- provide a fake value to return whenever it's called. So here we will pass an arrow function. And because the real um, Axios returns a promise, we need to deal with that as well in our fake Axios. So what we're going to do is just instantly resolve this promise. And we need to pass to this resolve function the data we want it to resolve with. So Axios resolves with an object that has a data property. And for now, we'll just say that our data is um, null. So imagine the server is responding with literally nothing. So now we can come back here and we can run our test again. And we'll see what it gives us. Okay. So cannot read property results of null. Um, so if you look at our test, it uh, calls Axios, but remember it's not the real Axios anymore, it's our fake one. Waits for the response, we're good so far. Puts the response here, and then this response gets data, but our data was null. So as soon as we did null.results, we get an error, because that doesn't work. So let's just say that the server responds to us with an, with an empty object. So we'll run our test again and see what it gives us. Cool. So this time it's uh, working. Well, it's saying it passed anyways. But you can see here we had a console.log statement. And what we're logging is the thing that's returned from our function. So we call unsplash, it's returned something, we're saying it's called images, and then we log that. But what it's telling us that it got back was a promise, which is makes sense because this unsplash function is asynchronous. So anytime you have an async await function, the thing it returns back to you is a promise that you need to then say dot then to, or in our case, we can actually make our test be async await as well. So we do that by just defining this test as async here, and now we can await the result from our unsplash function. So now when we come back here, we see that the result is undefined. Uh, the images are undefined that we got back from our unsplash function. So why is that the case? Well, we just had an empty object. And in our code, we, which is what data represents, and we asked it for results and there weren't any. Um, so we need to fix that. So here you could simply say, um, Okay, well then results is an empty array or whatever. But just to make this code a little bit more reusable, let's actually leave this fake Axios as it is. And we'll come into our test and we'll override the fake Axios just for this test. So we're gonna wanna import it. So import um, Axios from Axios. And remember, because we've mocked Axios here in this mocks folder, what we get back isn't the real Axios, but the fake one. So let's just give it a different name so that it's clear to us what we're dealing with, mock Axios. So we come down here and mocks Axio, mock Axios has a get function. And because get is a just mock function, it has some functionality that says mock implementation once. So basically override what was going on here over here and we're going to provide a new mock that's just going to be used once. So we'll pass an arrow function to this and we'll resolve a promise right away and it will have the same data that this time we'll have results and we can say that it's an array of images and we'll just say uh, because we're searching kittens, we'll uh, cute.jpg, like that. So now when we call unsplash, it's going to instead uh, use this mock implementation. 
And now because we've provided a specific result that matches what we would get back from Axios, or not from Axios, from Unsplash API, we should get this array here in the images variable. So we'll come back here, and in our console.log, we can see that it is now returning what we mocked out in our mock Axios. So let's write an actual test now. So because we know that we expect to get back this, I'll just copy it. And then I'll come down here and I'll say expect images to equal that array. So I'll just hit A to rerun the test. And you can see that it's now passing. And the test only took two milliseconds to run. So it's obvious it's not making the real HTTP request because there's no way it would respond within two milliseconds if that were the case. So you can sort of see that I've got a lot going on in this test now, and I like to split this up into three sections. So I call this the setup. So anything you need to do sort of pre-test. Here's the actual work of our test. So like run the code you're trying to test. And down here, you've got your assertions or your expects. So this is after you've actually done the work or you've called the function and you want to make sure that everything uh, worked as planned. So we're going to write a couple more expect. So now we can say we expect mock axios dot get. So that's that just dot fn mock function. And we're going to say um, to have been called times one. So what this says is we reach into our mock Axios and we get its uh, get property, which is that jest function. And because we called unsplash once right here, we should expect that this function was called one time. So we come back here and we see that now our test is working again, but now we're making sure that Axios was called the correct amount of times. And if we want to go further, we can make sure that we were passing the correct um, parameters to uh, axios.get. So we can write another expect clause. So expect mock axios.get to have been called with. And for, for now, I'm just going to put an empty string here. And the test is going to fail. And uh, But first, what, what is this? Basically, this allows us to look at the arguments or the parameters that were passed to the axios.get function when it was called. So if we come down here, it's failing because it didn't receive an empty string. What it actually received was the URL we were calling it with. So we'll just put that here as the first parameter. And the second parameter was this object here. And we'll save that. So now everything is passing again, because this was these were the exact um, arguments that the axios.get function was called with. And if you don't want to keep your client code here in your tests, probably a good idea. Um, we can do the same thing we did in our unsplash function. We can just access the environment variable. So process.env. Um, React app unsplash token, comma, and it's working again. Everything's passing. And just to go over this quickly, um, with Webpack and especially the Create React app setup, you can have it um, read some environment variables that are either set in the actual environment or that live in a .n file that you uh, don't put in your in your actual Git repository. Um, so if you look at the Git ignore here, you can see that we're ignoring the .n file. And so Create React App is specifically configured to bring in any environment variables that begin with React App like this. So we put this in our env, um, .n file. We can come back here and access that through the node process .env, and then um, we can access the React app unsplash token environment variable. So now we 
have tested this function, I'd say, pretty well. And just to review, we start at the top with our imports. So we imported mock Axios because we we're going to use it and specifically access the get function that we were mocking. We imported unsplash, which is the function we're testing. And then we wrote our jest test. We had to make this test asynchronous because it calls asynchronous code inside that returns a promise. So we wanted to be able to wait for that promise to resolve. So that's the first thing. But we started this test with some setup and we overwrote our mock Axios get function to basically provide it a mock implementation that we want it to use one time. So when it's called uh, for one time, it will return us the result of this arrow function here, which is a promise that resolves instantly and returns us an object that sort of mimics the Axios response and in the data object part of it, it mimics what the Unsplash API would return. Uh, their results um, array is obviously filled with things that are uh, bigger objects, not just uh, a string that says cute.jpg, but just for the purpose of this test, we're fine because we just wanted to make sure that when we do the work of this function, so we call the unsplash function, because it returns as a promise, we want to await, so await it that it resolves and put the images here. Now that we have the images in a variable, we can expect that they're equal to what we are expecting. And uh, we know exactly what to look for because we provided a mock implementation just above here. So you could even put this in a variable so that you just reference the same variable twice if you want. Then we specifically made a few, a uh, couple expectation calls uh, dealing with our get uh, mock function. So we checked that axios.get was indeed called one time and that we checked that it was called with the arguments, uh, the URL that we wanted it to reach, and then it was given all the different parameters that we were expecting to be sent to the API. And what we've ended up with is a function or a test that runs an asynchronous function very quickly, but it uh, does a mock call to Axios so that we didn't have to make a real HTTP request within our tests. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, have a great day. Bye.